everyone. It is Thursday, October 31st. It's 10.30 a.m. And get ready for the Halloween edition of Ask the Experts, where every week we bring you incredible experts that can share the insights to getting you two into the winning circle. And today, uh, Dave Williams had to have somebody step in as the host. So we have Tony Stark that's going to be here today uh, hosting the show. But what I wanted to do is uh, welcome our guest because we have a very special guest. She's a distinguished entrepreneur, business leader, and marketing consultant for 20 years of experience. That's 20 years of experience starting her business as a single mother. Uh, Casey has driven by desire and a strong role model for her daughter. Also has founded 10 thriving businesses. That's 10. Yes, three Allstate agencies. And uh, her accomplishment earned her recognition of being the top 1% in Allstate Insurance Business Owner of the Year and uh, 2024 Top Woman Owned Business uh, Award. And as a visionary behind the Professional Women's Empowerment Network, Casey has created a nationwide community that fosters collaboration. And outside of her professional achievements, Casey is passionate about travel, supporting her husband's watercross racing career and adventures. And Casey Cooker, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being on with us today and sharing your valuable knowledge and wisdom with everybody in the insurance syndicate group. Yeah, guys, thanks for having me and thanks for the invite and happy Halloween, everyone. Yes, happy oh, Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. All right, well, well, we'll get right into it. And the first question I have for you today is, you know, everything you, you've done looking at your bio is nothing short of incredible, especially coming from, from the place that you are. And I think the place that you came from will resonate with probably a lot of people out there that maybe came from the same place that you did, uh, or they're living in that place right now. So the question I have when you started your first business as a single mom, what was the biggest challenge you faced and then how you overcame that challenge to maybe share with everybody in the group how they can do the same? Yeah, I think the biggest challenge was, first of all, just, you know, pushing myself enough to actually take the jump and take the leap. And I know that a lot of times when I'm working with agents and a lot of business owners, you know, they think that everything has to be perfect and all, everything has to be all dialed in and they need to know all the answers before they start their first business or just take that jump. And, you know, looking back to the day, it's like, man, I didn't know anything. You know, I had no clue what I was doing. I just knew that I was on a mission. I needed to be a good role model I needed to provide for my daughter so it was pretty much just head down look forward do the work um, you know do all the hard things learn the lessons and just really keep going and, and get up and you know making the best out of out of each day so uh, a lot of lessons but I think I, I like I was saying looking back to the day it's you're not going to have it figured out. That's okay. Jump in and do it. You're going to figure it out along the way. That's what's going to build your, your confidence and your perseverance. And um, that's kind of what makes the true hardy entrepreneurs, right? Boom. Absolutely. I love it. Love it. Love it. And uh, I know, you know, scaling one business alone can be tough, but let's talk about your evolution. How did it go to one to 10 and, uh, you, you know, you've done it across multiple industries. What would you say the, the secret was for you to scale effectively? Because, you know, the reality is I think a lot of people get into entrepreneurship and they're struggling just to keep the one boat afloat, right? But you got a fleet of boats. And I'd be curious, you know, what advice do you have to somebody that's ready, right? It's somebody that's got their existing business. They kept the main thing, the main thing, and, it, and it's running to the point where they can take on something else. What advice would you have for those folks? Um, I would say that kind of, you know, my nerdy background, uh, personality of processes and really diving in, first of all, diving in myself, building those processes out. What do I want this to look like? What does it need to look like? All those different things. And then building that out and then bringing in te teams to help me manage it and run it because, you know, Solo is, I learned that very soon that you can't be all the things to all the people all the time. Mm -hmm. So it was about getting in there, figuring out what needed done, building processes around that, hiring team members to come in and help. And then, you know, it's like I'm that type that it's once I feel like I've 
kind of learned something and capped it, I'm like, okay, what's next? You know, so what other opportunities can I create? I love providing opportunities for other people. So it's like, okay, what, what else am I passionate about? What do I think I can provide some value? And then let's, um, let's spin a business out of it. Really? Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm, I'm of the same, uh, the same thought, right? If there's a major problem that's out there and it's in your passion and your wheelhouse and you're good at helping solve that problem, like there's no greater thing that you can do than, you know, start another product or service that can help, you know, serve other people out there. And what I want to do is wrap a little bit about on that um, really quick, because I think there might be some people, hey, they're just getting started. Right. And, you know, you talked about how you built your free your your business there with the right intention, the right processes, the right SOPs to create you know, a life by design is what I see, um, the way you want it to be. And I'm a big believer in that too. And we didn't always have it that way. We didn't always have it the right way. I think when I got my first business, it was, you know, doing the things we have to do. I'm front and center of everything. My own best salesperson, you're wearing all those multiple different hats until you earn the right, get a little bit of momentum under your wings, uh, to take some of those hats off and then hire highly capable people. But I think too many people get stuck, right? And they get cemented maybe in a setback and they stay in the role of wearing all those different hats. So like one of the things that I really like to do differently than when I did my first business is every single business, like do it with the intention. Hey, what is my real goal out of this? Not only do I want to serve people, but what am I really doing in the lens of entrepreneurship? And to me, one of the most valuable things is impact and freedom. How many people can I impact? How can I uh, change lives? But at the same time, how can I preserve and maybe enhance my individual freedom? Because to me, that's one of the most valuable things. And that's what entrepreneurship is all about. And I think there's too many people out there not experiencing the freedom that you can have with um, entrepreneurship. So one of the things that I really like to do as a good exercise, whether you're just getting started or whether you're um, maybe already in the trenches of it, is do like a time audit. And I still do this to this day. What are the things that I'm doing that are well below my pay grade that I shouldn't be doing? What are the things that I'm not passionate about that are impeding my freedom that I shouldn't be doing? And put that on the left column of the sheet and maybe just be real intentional about being aware for the week um, where all my time was spent. And then on the other side of things, what are the things that I should I should be doing? So by, by doing it this way, it kind of gets you in a different lens, gets you real connected to like your real purpose of entrepreneurship and, you know, hire out some of the tasks of the things that you can afford to pay somebody else to do that are well below your pay grade, or even hire out things that are not within your passion that free up more of that freedom. Right. And I guess, um, you know, that, that's how we that's how we handle things in uh, our business and how we operate. I'd be curious a little bit deeper dive on your processes and SOPs that you may be develop that allow your businesses, you know, not to run fully on autopilot, but do it in a way that allows you to still have your cake and eat it, too, when it comes to that life by design and that freedom. Yeah. And I mean, just to piggyback off of that exercise, that's an excellent exercise. I kind of spin it just a little different, but it's the same concept when I'm working with clients. It's like, okay, where are you spending your time throughout the day? So I actually have them get, you know, like a how we, when we're all gung ho about getting healthy. So we have the food tracker and it's like, okay, I'm going to track everything I do during, you know, everything I eat during the day and all the calories and all the things. So I just have them do that for their business. So pull out a journal. I want you noting all day, every day, what you're doing, how much time it's taking you kind of log that out. So you can get a clear picture of where you're spending your time. Because I think as busy business owners, we, we don't even realize how much time we are checking email or running errands or doing all the things that's kind of below our pay grade. So I love doing that too. It, it helps get a good, clear visual. And then you go back and evaluate and it's like, okay, if your if your time is worth $150 an hour, there are several um, things during the day that you're doing that's like a $20 an hour level. Yep. So how can we hire and delegate that out so you can spend your time doing a $150 value task that's going to bring more profit into your business? So I think that that's a I'm glad that you mentioned that um, because that's a great way. It's like, let's stop first. Let's evaluate what's going on so we know where we can tweak some things and and fix some things. And then we kind of just like you said, delegate, hire out, do the things that, you know, can really, it's really costing you when you're worth $150 an hour and you're doing $20 tasks. Look at the end of the day, how much money that's costing you by not doing those. So 
great exercise. We do a lot of things like that where it's just kind of like an evaluation. And then also it's like, okay, what kind of things do you love doing? What kind of things bring you joy and passion? So you're going to stay committed and that's going to keep you going through the hard days because as you guys know, as business owners, every day is not fun and it's not exciting and some days are hard and most days we want to be like why am i doing this i want to throw in the hat but you know those kind of things adding some of those things that you're passionate about into your daily life and daily routine helps you get through those great days i always love building businesses david like you were saying with a clear mission statement what's my goals what's my purpose of this what am i wanting to get out of it and also how can i make an impact in my community and the world so those are some of the things that we kind of start with and just Really, I believe, um, you know, building a really healthy foundation, that's going to help with the the long-term success of, of any business you're in, really. No, nah, absolutely. Uh, love that. Love that. Now, one thing that I found, one last thing on that note, I find it really helps real way, too, is getting getting clear on the vision, right? So, you know, what we like to do with our team is have everybody do vision boards. And I think it's important, too, for every entrepreneur that's on here, have your own vision board, have it there front side of mind, too, so you're connecting that on the tough days where you don't feel like it, right? The tough days where you're getting through those things, know that you're doing it. It's the same thing, you know, you're going to the gym and eventually if you keep showing up the right way, you'll have that six pack, you have that body that you want, right? Well, same thing with your business. When you're trying to build a business, it's delivering you that freedom to connect it and have the clarity to the vision, right? Like seeing your family on a, on a beach, getting to enjoy themselves more, like having that, you know, that, that, that house that you ideally want to live in, whatever your lens of freedom looks like, I find having that front and center every single day makes the tough days all the more easier because now you're doing it with purpose with a clear goal in mind that one day I'm going to make this vision like into reality. Right. I think that's what entrepreneurship is all about is taking, you know, creative visions and then bringing them to life. And that's probably one of the most uh, exciting things to me about entrepreneurship, but 20 years in business. Um, that's just incredible. I think a lot of people, their first year in uh, second year in uh, they don't make it. They throw in the towel is what statistics show. I'd be curious in the 20 years, what have you found is your biggest learning moment that's contributed to your success uh, as a serial entrepreneur? Um, you know what? It was probably recently with COVID, you know, all the things that I've kind of been through without my, you know, through my careers, it's like, you kind of think that you've been through it all and that you've like experienced all and that you learn it and you know, a little something and then something like the pandemic happens. And it's like that, that really, you know, I was always big in brick and mortar locations and buildings and, um, I had during the pandemic, a big wellness center where we were bringing agents into the wellness center and we were hosting, you know, two and three day retreats and really dialing into their agencies, but also working on that health and wellness aspect of it. And, um, I remember that we had, so we had, we were booked out like January through June. And in March, I started getting these cancellations. I was thinking, you know what, this is kind of weird that I'm getting cancellations. And then all of a sudden the airport starts shutting down and, I'm like, okay, this is something serious. Like I got to, you know, look at this because then people couldn't even travel. So in that moment, it's like, you got to pivot and you got to pivot fast. You got to, you know, lean into all the resources that you've le learned over the years and figure out what you're going to do because, you know, nobody knew what was going on. And I had a feeling like, I don't think that this is, this is like major stuff happening. I don't think it's going to be lightening up anytime soon. Like I've got to make a plan of how can I get online? How can I pivot? How can I bring an experience and some training? So that was probably kind of one of the biggest things um, in my career is like, okay, you think you know something, but now you know nothing, figure it out because you got to pivot really quick. <laughs> no, absolutely. I love it. And I think a lot of people, you know, don't realize like time get tough. And then we focus on the tough part of the times, but not realizing, Hey, the, the glass, half full part of it really is I actually prefer operating in tough times because when you're operating in adversity, what is everybody else doing? They're all retreating. They're all retracting. They're all in the opposite mindset. So it's like that path to success, while it might not be easy, it's, it's kind of a more, I guess, empty highway. There's not a lot of a traffic on it than usual. And I think in that environment, it provides a unique opportunity because now you're chasing the opportunities other people aren't chasing. Then you just ask yourself in this new season, hey, COVID, for example, how can we solve another set of problems? 
And I think every there's good seasons, there's bad seasons, but there's one thing to expect is the roller coaster of entrepreneurship. There's always going to be the highs, there's always going to be the lows. But once you start thinking, how do I do things differently than everybody else does during the lows? You know, that that's what really recreated our company like Team Hired. We are an in-person recruiting company. And obviously we, we couldn't do anything in person anymore. You know, and most a lot of companies they just gave up the towel and threw it in. And we just pivoted. And because we pivoted, it actually made our services better than ever, solved a bigger problem than ever, and transitioned very well into the new world that we now live in, this virtual world where everybody's working remote and uh, we're leveraging technology for anything. So I think anybody that's there, you're in a season, right? Which I think a lot of people are in that season right now and you're listening to this. Find the silver lining in the season and find the hidden opportunity that's maybe hidden behind the problem and go at it and go all in. And that's the one thing that I think, you know, could change any business uh, trajectory to make it, you know, greater than it's ever been. Yeah, absolutely. And for me, even personally, like that, that forced me to get really creative and dig deep. And so personally, you know, my life is just so much more full of freedom now than it was pre COVID. You know, I can work anywhere remotely. I don't have the big burden of a huge building and bringing people in. I'm creating those experience and traveling to different places and stuff. So my life is so much more full of freedom because that forced me to be like, you know, okay, I got to figure this out dig deep, do what you got to do, look for opportunities, you know, where, like David was saying, where are there some, some gaps in the marketplace and how can I fill that and then design your life around it. And yeah, I mean, that was kind of the best thing that's ever really happened in my career is that because now I'm, you know, I'm able to accomplish so much more and get in front of so many people because of just looking for those opportunities. No, and I think whatever you believe will, you know, it's true. Right. So it's like if you believe hey, you're going to fail because of the circumstances you're in and you don't do anything about it, you're probably going to fail. But if you believe that you can achieve even in those you know tough times, like you're going to probably find your way through that. And I think when I look back on every moment in the moments that I thought were going to break me. Like I started to realize those moments were the moments that actually built me. It's the moments that take us to the next level, the moments that make us more capable. So when I look at my problems, I used to stress about, fear about, fret about, you know, 10 years ago, probably the same thing with you. It's like those things come so effortlessly now that it's, we can handle a whole different subset of problems and carry so much more on our shoulders. And that, that kind of leads me into you, because you got a lot on your shoulders. You got a lot of different companies, 10 different companies you have there. And I think what the audience would be really curious about is what your day-to-day -day routine looks like. If you look at, hey, a full work day for Casey, how do you break that down, uh, I guess, to do so much and have your cake and still eat it too? Um, a, a team really. So my day to day is I love marketing. I'm passionate about marketing. So that's what I start my day with because that really fuels me and gets me in the zone of like, you know, the things that I need to do for the day. So I, in the morning, you know, of course do some personal stuff in the morning to start my day. I do take it as I'm getting older, a little bit easier in the morning, give myself a little bit of time to just kind of like sit and be instead yeah. of like, you know, jumping up and hitting the ground running and going to tear up the world. Um, so I'm I do a little bit of that kind of just being for a little bit, dive into marketing and then just start working my team. You know, who's doing what? Where are we at? Just kind of doing that morning huddle with them. What's our goals for the day? Um, and then it's, you know, I'm out and about, I'm looking for opportunities. Who can I help provide some value to? Um, I love being on different podcasts like this um, and creating kind of my own uh, different revenue streams and things that we got doing on. I do a lot of uh, agent meetings, um, just helping them be creative and building their, their agencies and helping them really look at their agency as a business versus just an agency. Um, so do a lot of calls like that. So yeah, it's kind of a mix of, you know, getting creative in the morning, um, delegating the team, seeing where everybody's at, and then diving into a lot of coaching and consulting throughout the rest of the day. No, I love that. Love that. And you mentioned having a great team. And I think in order to have a great team, you got to have a great leader, which uh, clearly you are. And I would be curious what leadership means to you and how your leadership style has evolved from you know, day one until today. 
Yeah. Leadership is just, you know, to me, it's, it's being the part, being the example, practicing what you preach, getting in the trenches, you know, helping lead and grow your team. Really. I love, um, helping develop people with that coaching kind of aspect. So uh, to me, leader is, it's just, you dial it back very simple. You, you be the leader that you want to be and you example, you know, you show that for others and really inspire, make an impact, make a difference. And then that, that really gives um, other people the permission to do that also. So yeah, I think that that leadership is a growth, especially over, you know, your career. And when I first, you know, started my business, it's like, okay, I'm a, I, I think of a business owner, maybe, I don't know yet, but you know, you really didn't have like a lot of that leadership skill. So I think that that getting into your business and diving in and doing the work, that's what helps to develop and lead and, you know, evolve it over the years. And now it's just about, you know, I just want to inspire others, make a difference. It's in my community and the in work and in the world. And so how can I be the best version of myself and practice what I preach so others can follow that also? No, I love it. Love it. And there's a great, uh, great analogy. A good uh, friend of mine, Big Mike, uh, says too about leadership. And it's like, you think about it, lead your ship. And if you want to effectively lead your ship and be a great captain, it's like, you know, keeping the main thing, the main things, your people will do as you do before they do as you say. But I think great leadership is all about great partnerships. It's all about great relationships. It's all about investing in yourself with great mentorship. So then you can keep elevating so you can elevate those uh, beneath you. And if you do all those things, you can win a lot of championships. So lead your ship and, uh, you know, the partnerships, the relationships, the mentorships, and that's a recipe to win championships. Yeah, absolutely agree. Couldn't, couldn't have said it better. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Casey, um, I've got a question for you. You said you do, you know, like a morning huddle with your team, you'll get together, um, have a conversation, I'm a little bit curious what that looks like, because I'm assuming with your level of experience, you've picked up some things to create an environment uh, and a culture that where you can openly communicate with one another, where you guys can uh, play off of each other's strengths. And, you know, really, I'm, I'm sure there's situations where maybe you just get out of the way, too, and just let somebody, you know, run versus times when maybe you have to step in and you have to push a little bit. So I'm curious, kind of your formula for running meetings specifically just for anybody here who has a team and they feel like maybe their daily huddles have become stale or they've become very military. Um, any recommendations for just organizing better meetings with a team? Yeah. So kind of what I do now is I used to do like a whole group morning huddle with everybody every day. Right. But then that got a little, you know, some some people you already always have them kind of some aren't as you know, active or aggressive, or maybe aren't getting the help that they need just because they're not wanting to speak up as much. So now what I do is I do one of those a month. So the morning huddle is more one group setting a month. And then in the mornings, it's just kind of like one-on-one -on -one check ins. And just like you said, like, I think that's the biggest thing of a business owner is we, is a lot of times we have to get out of our own way and get out of our team's way and trust them to do that, you know, what they're, what they're capable of doing. And so it's just more of just like a supportive environment in the morning, every morning we we're going to, you know, I check in and everybody like states their goal and then what they've got to accomplish for today. And then also what their support task, you know, what kind of support they need. So now it's very one-on-one -on -one personalized, but it's very simple. It's not, you know, an hour with each person. It's literally a message back and forth, 10 minutes. It's, it's amazing what just a 10 minute check-in with someone can do to, you know, set the trajectory for their day. So now it's just simple check-ins in the morning. And then that one group, once a month. Okay. What have we accomplished this month? Um, what are our goals? What is a personal goal? I love diving into the team's personal goals because I want to know what they're striving for personally. Cause I, you know, feel that that really affects their performance in the business. And then, you know, that just helps me know what motivates them and what's driving them as a leader. I, I want to know those things personally outside of the agency and outside of the businesses. So very simple check-in. It goes a long way, makes a big impact. It doesn't need to be anything that's time consuming or complicated that's going to eat up a lot of your day it's just those little simple check-ins and then like I said we we kind of meet uh, once a month as a as a group team and really go over what did we accomplish what are we wanting to accomplish are we still in alignment with the goals that we set out of the first year and um, yeah I think that's the best thing that I've done is dialed it back to a lot more simpler instead of it having this big thing every morning 
Awesome. I love that. I love that. And now I'm going to get into a topic I know that's near and dear to your heart because you're absolutely crushing it across the country with helping agents with their branding and their marketing. And I know you don't just do the normal, uh, same old, same old when it comes to branding and marketing. So I'd like to dive into that and talk a little bit about um, how you do things differently when it comes to uh, branding, when it comes to marketing and what you do, uh, what do you believe is the essence of having an actual strong brand? Well, first of all, I'm so excited that agents are finally getting on the bandwagon of, okay, I think there's something to social media and being present online and a personal brand and that helping become part of an influencer. And then that attracts people to want to do business with you. So it's been, it's funny, you know, all the years I've always kind of had a passion for this. So it came natural to me. So I've always kind of done it. In fact, um, when the region would hire a new agent, they would direct them to me and to my Facebook page and social media and be like, this is kind of how you do it. This is, you know, how you can get started. And so, um, but there was always that like disconnect, like insurance agents, we need to be super professional. We can't be creative. We have to be very, you know, we can't have any fun. We need to be fit no. right inside the box of what everyone tells us and what corporate's wanting and all of that. Right. And so I'm excited that now this is a trending topic for agents and they're like, wait a minute, you know, there, there is something more to me outside of this very professional, strict black and white outline border. And um, I want to take advantage of that. And I think that that's exactly how, the way that you can, can stand out these days as an agent. You know, there's so many, the industry is saturated with agents and a lot of, you know, hectic chaos kind of going or go, going on and going around companies pulling out rates are kind of back and forth companies are adjusting and shifting and all of that static so it's more how can i take the things the values and the beliefs and the things that are important to me and really who i am as a person versus as an agent or a business owner and how can i use that to show up so people can relate to me and I can build those relationships and I can look a little different, you know, coming out online. I'm when I'm coaching agents all day, it's like, okay, th this stuff is starting to trend. Yep. So get on the bandwagon now so you can be that much further ahead of the game and let's start building this out. And, and it doesn't have to be hard or complicated. You can really start simple. And then before you know it, you know, back in the day, it's like, man, if I, if I looked at my videos that I used to do back then, it's like, oh my man, what was I, you know, what was I thinking? It's just crazy how much growth and how that evolves just before you know it, just by doing in the work and, and doing it consistently. So I'm excited that agents are getting um, on board with this. And I think that this is a way that they can really stand out and um, be that leader in that, in their community and really that influencer and, whether we like it or not, that really does attract people to want to do business with you just because you're, you know, that influencer in that community. So, um, yeah, I'm passionate about it. I love doing it, especially when I can help develop someone that's very black and white and doesn't really even know, um, you know, what their personality traits are or their values or their beliefs. We have to like it's really a personal development journey, creating their brand. Um, so I love going through that process with them. No, I love it. Love it. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, one of the things you said there, when you first got started, you look back and you're like, wow, it's like night and day difference between today and yesterday. And I think that's what stops people from really getting started or they get started and they watch that very first video and they're like the same thing. Wow. I don't want to keep doing this. What do you have to say to somebody is maybe an easy way to get started, to get past that fear, to get through those first, like really rough um, videos where they start to build the the confidence that turns into confidence that really allows them to go out online and, and be their true authentic self that, cause I think like attracts like, and if you yeah. go out there, everybody's got great personalities. If you're not trying to just be like everybody else and you just go out and be yourself, you're going to attract, I think some of the like-minded people that you want into your business. So uh, what, do you, what do you have to say uh, to those individuals that are stuck at the, the start line? Uh, get over yourself. Do it anyways. You just have to do it. You're not you're not going to like how you sound. You're not going to like how you look. You're just accept the fact that you're probably not going to, you know, 99% of people don't like what they're putting out there at first. 
Uh, you're not alone. Everybody feels that way. So you're not going to like it, but do it anyways, because that's what's going to help you get better and get confident. The more confident you get, then, you know, the more better you're going to get. And then you're going to start building from there. So it's it's just a matter of accept that you're not going to like it, accept that it's not going to be perfect. Do it anyways, so you can get some practice under your belt and get over some of those fears. And then before you know it, really, it's it's almost like the, the hardest is just like picking up the phone and doing it. But yep. once you've got that one over, then it's, it comes, becomes a little easier and then it becomes a little easier. Then it's like, oh, OK, let me play with this different you know app or things like that. So you really you really start gaining that confidence quickly, but you just got to get out of your way and do it. Oh, absolutely. And, mm -hmm. I, and I think once they get into there and they start to get that momentum, you start to like what you were once afraid of, mm -hmm. like in your own way, unique way, you, you start to fall in love with. And then you start to, hey, this is a lot of fun and it's not as bad as I thought it would be. So I like that's some great, great advice. I love it. So now for um, still on the marketing side for business owners that are looking to scale, what would you say some like key marketing strategies, like tactical stuff that will drive, you know, real, real time results to somebody that's out there, maybe not getting the results that they get today. Cause we all know brand building can, you know, take a little bit of time, but when you combine that with some of the tactical strategies that can create some of the more immediate results for people that need that today, they're at the end of the year and they got to hit their year round goals. Um, what are some of the things you see working the best out in the industry along those lines? Um, I, first of all, I like always having a balanced approach. So it's like, okay, what kind of things are you doing? So the first thing you can do is just stop and evaluate like, okay, you've got, you know, 10 months out of the year that have gone, what things have worked in those 10 months, where have you got some wins and then take some of that out and piggyback on that and dive into that. So first of all, stop and evaluate throughout this year, what's been working. Let me dive into those things that are working and then always having that balanced approach. And then I'm a huge fan of picking up the phone, taking COIs out to lunch, going to networking meetings. Like I'm a huge fan of like getting in the trenches hands on. And I believe that once you start that energy, the leads and the things follow and you can get some fast wins from that. So yeah, I would say stop and evaluate where are you at? What's been working? How can you kind of like put some more investment or, or marketing dollars towards what's working? And then get out in your community, go to some events, meet some people. You never know who you're going to meet at a networking event that could have, you know, a huge group of referrals or what whatever that looks like, building that relationship. So yeah. um and plus, I think that getting out in the community, that helps our mindset when we are at year end and we're all we're thinking about is numbers and pushing to the end. We kind of get, you know, heavy and, and kind of, you know, lack of energies just because of that heaviness of those numbers. But getting out of your community, it's almost like it's a, you know, a mindset boost and recharges you and you kind of start remembering why you're doing what you're doing. And and that right there can just, you know, flip the trajectory of, of what you're trying to chase. No, absolutely. And I love that. Getting out in the community, going out to events, but doing it with the right reasons, with the right intentions. Because you know, I think we all been there before. We go to like those events, we go to conferences, whatever it might be. And you're going there for the dopamine hit, hanging around with the same people, never meeting anybody new, and yes. then never taking action and implementing anything you learned. And I, you know, that, that's where I came up with my rule of three when it comes to going to events. So it's like, fine there. If it's a big event, Hey, are there three people here I can serve? Because, you know, I'm a firm believer, the more people that you help get to where they want to go, that you never have to worry about your destination. That's just going to happen as a byproduct. Find three people you can collaborate with that are maybe like-minded, that you guys have opposite strengths and weaknesses, and you can help each other get to the, you know, you don't see anybody climbing Mount Everest alone, right? And help each other up that mountain and then find three mentors, you know, that make you uncomfortable that you can learn from and they can teach you a thing or two about a thing or two and then take three things from the event, maybe from a tactical standpoint, because everybody's trying to do everything and you can't implement everything, but what are three things? And then what is the top one out of the three that you can implement that very next day and focus on? And then that's where I think the real the real value comes out of those events is by having that sort of intention and then immediately putting into action because learning isn't learning unless it's implemented. And then that's where the real learning that I found takes place. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We just had a I just hosted a big um, women in business event last week in Salt Lake City, Utah, and that was kind of the main purpose of the event is who can you collaborate with? 
who can you meet that's new today and who can you build a relationship with? So it's all about relationship building. It's not how many referrals are you getting today or how many business cards or how many leads? It's not that it's who can I build a relationship today and provide some value? And then we can kind of talk back and forth forth about providing that value. And so we had a whole activity around that. And I was surprised that, you know, most of the most of the ladies in the room were very uncomfortable having to get up and introduce themselves and meet new people. You know, we're all just gravitated to we sit at the same table, you know, the same people are at our table. That's who we're comfortable with. So when I push them to where it's like, okay, everyone stand up, we're going to go meet new people. We're going to do all of this together. There was a little bit of hesitation and uncomfortable comfortableness there but I could once they got into that I could feel the energy in the room of just like so many connections and um you know different things happening and it's like it, it was just a great experience to be a part of but um yeah there there's nothing better than that no I love that love it and then being that you have uh you know such a robust community of other women that you're leading there you know, one thing I want to pivot on a little bit, because I think it could add a lot of value, even to folks that are outside the insurance industry right now, because let's be real, I think economically we're, you know, a lot of people are facing tough times, especially if people are in the shoes when you started right now, right? And you got a single mom that's, you know, taking care of kids, going to their W-2, trying to make ends meet, which is difficult to do for a lot of Americans right now. What advice do you have for that maybe single mom that's trying to get ahead, that feels like she's drowning in her W-2, that she could maybe do because one of the one of the beliefs I have is there's no shortage of money on this planet. How can some of those single moms get out and get some of that money? What is that path of least resistance to get started? Um, I would say the biggest thing is is look for a mentor. You know, maybe yep. one that you can just shadow. Maybe you know it's it's one that you know I I coach and mentor people all the time, but I always love having those passion projects where it's like. You know, if somebody calls me up and it's like, hey, can I just shadow you to learn how I can start a business or how I can create some more revenue streams or evaluate some things? Can I kind of just shadow you? Absolutely. All day long, like, the, you know, oh, yeah. the business owners and mentors are happy to do that. So I would say that the first thing is like you got to break that mindset that there's not enough money and you're chasing your W-2. So who can you be around and mentor and surround yourself with that thinks differently just so you can have a new perspective and start there with your mindset. No, I love that. And that goes into one of my principles. You know, one of my other favorite mentors, David Meltzer always says it's ask for help, right? Is like in this world, like you got to get good at asking for help. That was something that I struggled with. And then realize that when you go out and do that, you know, if you're a servant going out and helping other people and then in the times that you need it and you ask for help, people genuinely want to help that's out there. So that's, that's great advice because nobody would really ever think of that. Hey, here's somebody over here doing what I want to do. You know, what if I were to ask them, could I shadow you for a day? Could I shadow if you're, you know, that might build that very relationship because anytime I've seen my life get better and it's probably the same for you, it was never a what, it was never like a how, it was always a who moment. There was always somebody that I learned from, I mentored from in some capacity that was a pivotal role that allowed me to get to that next best place in life. So I absolutely, absolutely love that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I remember back in the day starting the agency, it's like my first goal was like, make it 90 days and hit the star bonus. We had something that was called the star bonus. So the star bonus was like 20 K. If you met your goals, you got this 20 K bonus to where you could pay yourself back of, you know, all this leading up to the expenses. But I remember with that bonus, what I did is I was like, okay, who are the top three agents in the country I'm going to reach out to them. I'm going to ask if I can come to their agency and shadow them for a couple of days. And that's what yeah. I used some of that money for was going out and shadowing some of these agents that knew what they were doing, had more experience than me, had processes set up on the back end. They were winning. Um, and that's kind of how, you know, I think that was actually my first plane ride ever was I got on a plane and flew to Kansas City, Missouri to a bigger agent there and shadowed her for a few days. No, I love that. That's a, that's a good reason uh, for a first plane ride for sure. And now because uh, your future is so bright, you're probably getting on lots of plane rides because I see that you love to travel in your bio here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Love traveling. That's what kind of, you know, helps me grind all day. Every day is that break of, of traveling, going to a new place, meeting new people, hearing other people's stories. So yeah, definitely traveling, keep, keep, traveling keeps me grinding in the hustle every day. No, I love it. Love it. And then staying on the, the branding topic here, I know 
there's the right way to do things. And then there's the wrong way to do things. And then uh, there's maybe the cringe way to do things. What are some of those maybe like don't do's um, that, you know, people that are listening today, they're looking to get their brand going that they can maybe learn from some of the, either the mistakes you made or the mistakes you've seen that can help them, I guess, navigate the journey a little bit better. Yeah, I would say probably a lot of the stuff that I see is a, a lot of times people think their brand is about like, you know, a logo and some cool colors or some cool graphics with it. But but really, your brand is more about who you are and getting really dialed into really who you are as a person and then help, you know, helping kind of bring that to life and showcasing that online and in your community. So that's the first thing is like if you're starting and you're wanting to create your brand don't go into it as I need to create this really cool logo and, and the assets yeah. of it. It's more about, okay, let me stop and take a self-evaluation. Who am I? What do I believe in? What kind of beliefs do I have? What's my goals in life? What am I passionate about? Those kind of things. And that's kind of how you start developing those assets to match that and what your mission and your goals are. So that's my first tip I, I would say is don't get caught up in the, the logo and having it look perfect, yep. you know, perfect, dig deep, take a self-evaluation and, and kind of start there. No, I love that. Love that. Don't, don't get caught up in the label, but get caught up in the sauce. Right. So yeah. what I like to do is make sure you got good sauce. So the people that want to come back and eat it, they're not coming back for the label. They're coming for the sauce. Right. And that's what I like to do in any business product service is, Hey, get really clear on what am I trying to do? I'm trying to serve people. I'm trying to add them value. I'm trying to solve problems. Well, how can I solve these problems in a different way that other people aren't doing that's attractive, that's compelling? And it's what I like to call a nine out of 10. What's a nine out of 10? Like when I pitch this product or service, it sounds so attractive, so compelling that it solves nine out of 10 of the people's problem. Because what I see out there too is so many people get out there, they're looking for the perfect brand to your point, looking for the perfect label and they don't spend enough time tasting the sauce and make sure it's there. And they go out there with a half-baked product and it's a five out of 10 and they find themselves like pushing a boulder uphill. And the reason why is it's not that business is tough. It's just that you don't have a good enough mousetrap that's solving a problem good enough where people see, you know, uh, then enough value in your service. But if you have that nine out of 10 product, I'm a firm believer that that's where your brand can actually harness its own energy. Right. And what is harnessing its own energy? Well, you start to turn your customers into brand evangelists. And then that naturally starts to get out into the ecosystem of other like minded customers. Well, now what it does is it takes on an energy of its own to solve those same problems for the other people. So always have a nine out of 10 uh, product or services. Yeah, love that. Love that tip on that. And yeah, it's really about, you know, your brand is more about kind of like the experience and the energy, uh, you know, and tracking that like attract likes um, type of mentality around it. And that's really what you want people to feel something, not see something with your brand, but you want them to feel something and experience something with your brand. So that's what I try to, you know, tap into and help bring that out. It's, it's crazy too, you know, once you, um, a, as we, you know, get going through lives, we kind of stop and, and don't really remember the things that really drive us and what we're passionate about. And a lot of times, you know, I, when I'm working with clients that they really have to dig deep, like, I don't know what I like doing. I'm just doing the things all day, every day. I don't know what, what did I like doing that I'm not doing anymore. So that's, I think the piece that I love about it, because I love growing and developing people. And so really branding is a personal development experience and a journey. And then you're just kind of helping going back to your roots and helping bring that, you know, bring that to life. No, I love that. I love that. Casey, um, if you don't mind, I'd love to uh, learn a little bit about your ninja tactics that you might be using that that people aren't aware of. Because I think when we think like Facebook, for instance, it's easy to fall into the idea that the only thing I can ever do is just post content, just post content, right? Put out a reel, put out a post. But like in my own personal journey on Facebook, I discovered a tool where you can go and extrapolate the user ID of every user in an entire group. And then you can automatically send out friend requests and start to dig yourself into that network through connections, not through spamming, through messaging. And that's when, for me, I said, whoa, this isn't just a content game. There's some tactics and some things you can do here. And I'm just curious if behind the scenes, right, behind your brand, if there's certain outreaches happening, if there's tactics or strategies that maybe would help people 
sort of, I don't want to say cash in, but really um, benefit from the network they've already built. Because I, I see a lot of people with great networks, but then I wonder, are you tapping into that network as deep as you can, or are you just continually putting out content with and expecting people to come to you all the time? So is there anything you could speak to that you've learned over the years that's been helpful tactic-wise on social media to just engage at a deeper level? Yeah, and I, I think that's one of the best things that you can do. It's like, okay, once you've got this dialed in and kind of have like somewhat of a mission and a goal around it, then it's like, utilize all of the tools and the resources that are out there because you utilizing those tools of like helping you, you know, upload your content that makes it easier, helping you put captions on your stuff because 90% of people don't listen to the audio. They like seeing those captions. So using those captions app, you know, helping or grabbing an app that creates templates for you. So you're just plugging and playing. So really it's about, you know, arming your, your tool bag with the tools and resources and apps that are out there so you can start being consistent because then it's easier when you're using those apps it makes it easier so then producing that content can be easier and then like you said now that i'm i've got my brand somewhat dialed in i've got some tools and resources i'm starting to put that on out there online and putting content out there i'm now more confident because i'm being consistent with my content then okay let's get strategic about that let's upload some lists from my you know email list let's upload that on the back end and then target those on a paid you know facebook ad campaign or there's so many different things that you can do but i, I think that dial it back start somewhere get the tools and resources that will keep you consistent and then once you get consistent, OK, let's get strategic and learn some of these things as a, let's take advantage of your COIs, your email list, your your friend, your friends list on your on your personal profile and target some of those to build some relationships and build community around. You know, that's one of the best things that I love doing with my brand is really not how can I get a new lead, but how can I build community and create this experience so people want to be a part of my community and and always you know see what I'm up to. No, I love that. Love that. Awesome. And I like to I like to look at some of those things from a branding perspective. Look at it like a bug light, right? So you can go out there and kill bugs one of two ways. You can go out there and do it one by one with one of those like fly swatters or electric fly swatters, or you can just hang one of the lights and then they all come to the light and zap thousands of them, right? So it's like, what bug lights can you hang up, whether that's through maybe somebody that you can collaborate with that has the same um, customer avatar, deliver them a lot of value, and in turn, start delivering their customers a lot of value, but kind of look at it that way. What are some of the things that I could do in the bug lights that I can start to hang up um, that are going to attract some of those ideal clients to me? Yeah, absolutely. And that sense of the community, I think that's one of the best things that I, you know, it took me a little bit to learn that. But once I learn how much people crave community, and then it's like, okay, what type of experience and community can I create out there online and in my community and then kind of join those together? Um, that's really kind of the secret sauce to a brand is, is really, you know, putting that out there, creating some spaces and some community and, and, you know, like David said, get that bug light. So they're attracted to it. And then those people are never going to leave you and they're going to be your best referral sources and recommend you and, you know, talk, yes. you know, drive people to you. Once you get that community and people are in it, they're going to drive other people to the community. And then you kind of just, you know, keep spinning off of that. See, I thought he said Bud Light, not Bug Light. I was like, "Where's this going, Dave?" But yeah. Bud Light, Bud Light, got it. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a different uh, that's a different episode. And uh, <laughs> no, but then uh, you know, what I like to do too, because I know one of the things that's like important to you is community, right? Heart, kind of like Tony Stark's heart. And uh, so when it comes to like you know, really putting the heart into what you do in a community impact, and then tying that into your brand, um, how do you do that in a way where you know, you're all, not only driving impact, but that impact that you're driving is actually creating more brand value at the same time. Yeah, it's I mean, it's just really dialing that back into like, who am I as a person? What kind of impact do I want to make in my community and in the world? And that being the basis of your brand and the mission of your community and by, you know, showcasing that and putting that out there, then that it kind of just starts taking a life of its own, really. If you started a, and with good intention and what you're wanting to build out from it, 
then you start getting some content and some things out there and you would, you know, start attracting those community members, then it kind of just takes a life on its own. And it's, it, it just kind of like feeds itself, which is kind of the, the beautiful part, part about it is, is, you know, having that great intention. And then it kind of just starts feeding the, the ecosystem on its own. No, I love that. Love that. And I guess tying into that too, like a good segue is, um, you know, tell us about, you know, when it comes to impact and I think everybody's looking to leave a legacy. We're not here forever. Right. What is some of the, you know, the part of the business aspect that you aspire to, to leave as a legacy, um, as a byproduct of your business when you're maybe long and gone? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm surrounded in a family of girls. So that's, you know, why I have my women community. I have granddaughters now. I, I, um, I'm the oldest granddaughter myself and there's 16 granddaughters, only one grandson. So it's always been like a lot of female energy around me. So I remember too, back in the day when I got into the uh, insurance industry, it's like, wow, this is there's not a lot of tools and resources for a female excuse exclusive. This is pretty, you know, male dominated. We love our guys, nothing wrong with that, but females just need a little bit different spin on learning and being motivated and wearing all of the different hats during the day. Um, so it was really about the legacy of how can I create some tools and resources and a space for women to really learn and grow and be able to generate revenue because women are the biggest givers. So, I mean, a woman makes a hundred bucks, she's going to give away $75 of it, you know, typically in her community or to someone in need or whatever. So it was really that, that vision of how can I create some tools and resources to grow and develop other leaders that are female based to where they can start creating some revenue and generating that and making an impact in their community, which in turn helps my granddaughters and all my female cousins and, you know, all the women that I'm con connected to. So that was kind of the preface of it as, you know, starting out in the trenches, single mom, I got to make it happen, make it work. And then being surrounded by all this female energy, it's like, I, okay, I think that you know, I'm being told some type of message here. I, I got to make what's best of it and, and create a legacy out of that. No, I absolutely That's love amazing. that. Love that. And I guess, you know, if you could go back to, you know, in the earlier days or when you first started, knowing what you know now, what advice would you um, give yourself? Oh, gosh. Um, it's really going to be okay. Like you're stronger than you think. It, it's going to be okay. Every hard thing you go through, you're going to learn through that. That's my favorite quote is what you go through, you grow through. Yeah. So um, just, you know, just trust in yourself more, believe in yourself more. It's going to be okay. This is what's building you. Um, this is all intentional and just, you know, buckle up and, and enjoy the ride. I absolutely love that. Love that. And uh, as we're getting, uh, you know, towards the end of the show, definitely thank you so much for, for being on. I mean, you just just provided a, a ton of value to the group that's everybody watching. So first and foremost, before everybody gets off, if you're watching it live or you're watching the rerun, make sure to put some love below in uh, the chat for Casey for spending her time with us today. But I want to give you an opportunity at the end to talk to people about, you know, what it is like to work with you and how people can work with you, how people can follow you. But a final question before that is if you had one or two things you could leave people today, and that's it, um, just one or two main things that's just going to give them the biggest impact in their businesses, the biggest impact in their life, what would those one or two um, kind of final thoughts be with the, with the listeners today? Um, I would say definitely I'm, I'm a big doer. So it's just start now. So if it's a business owner tuning in and thinking about something or, or even an agent, I mean, I had so many different kind of things going on the side during, you know, my agency career that I was passionate about. So um, do it now, start now. There's a reason why you're hearing those messages of some things that are starting to drip into, you, you know, your mind and inside your space. So do it now. There's not, there's never going to be a perfect time. So just start that now and tr quit trying to like control and, you know, manipulate that to the right timing. There's no such thing as the right timing. Just do whatever you're, you're feeling like you're being called to do or that you're passionate about, you've been thinking of, there's a reason for that. So jump into that now, do that now. And then I think probably for the business side is um, really surround yourself in, in rooms of winners. 
Um, it, it's okay. kind of like an old cliche that everybody, yeah. you know, says all the time, but it really does work and it oh, true. really gets some quick um, mindset shifts and also which turns into results in your business just by doing that one little tweak. So if you're hearing all the static online about all the different numbers and all the different changes and how, you know, they don't want us to win and all of that stuff and you're listening to that, find a different room to listen to yeah. some other, you know, I was on a, a live yesterday of just two winners is like, okay, this is the new stuff. This is, we're going to make it happen. We're going to win in 2025, just like we did in 2024. What do we need to do? So I, I would think that that's the best thing is with all the negativity, shut that out, block out that noise, get into a positive room and get into that good space. No, I love that. Love that. Because winners always find a way. So you got to find a room of other like-minded winners. And then once you get into that room, earn the right to stay into that room and then maybe keep working on it. And so you have to go to the, you know, the, the next room. Um, but love it, love it, love it. And that being said, I want to give you time. Like how to, you know, what does it look like working with you? How do people work with you? You know, first and foremost, the different ways and, uh, you know, how do they, how do they reach you? How do they follow you? Yeah, my um, handle on all my social medias is Casey the Biz Lady. Um, so you can follow me online all over all, all of the platforms. I'm just getting ready to enroll for my six figure brand boot camp. So our 2020 25 season is just enrolling. So you can come in and work with me. I help you dive into that personal journey of like figuring out all of the pieces of who you are. And then we start building that out. I've got some fun topics. There's six different lessons and fun topics. I, I try to make it really fun and glammy and, you know, digging deep into all the things. So the brand bootcamp is just launching. I've got my women's community. So yeah, if you just go to my website, caseycookert.com, that's kind of the home of all of the things that I have going on. Um, and you can follow me from there and, and learn about some of my services. And really, it's just about, you know, providing some space for growth. So helping other people win and, and grow. And I believe that's what starts changing the world is when, you know, one winner at a time, then we start inspiring others. And then that kind of makes like a big shift. No, and I absolutely, absolutely love that. And again, I want to encourage everybody in the audience that uh, Casey is the real deal. I mean, she's somebody out there that's been in the winning circle that continues to be in the winning circle that's, you know, running multiple companies. And I think those are a lot of the good things you look for in a coach, right? And those, um, those that are actually living what they're preaching. And that's something here we get with Casey. So if you're, you know, needing a coach, you're needing somebody that, uh, can help you, uh, you know, with your marketing, with your branding, help you get creative. You know, I'm a be big believer. Again, you can't do great things in life alone. You need a coach for everything. I have a coach for everything. I have multiple mentors on the business side. I have a spiritual coach. I have a, a therapist coach. I have a health coach. Um, so every important aspect of life, um, you know, I have a coach and I think everybody should have a coach. So if you need a coach, um, you know, when it comes to business, when it comes to life, when it comes to branding and marketing, Casey is your gal. Uh, make sure to, to look her up on social media and uh, reach out. And thank you. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today and um, just giving a, a wealth of knowledge and wisdom to all the listeners today. And to everybody out there, this has been another episode of Ask the Experts. Tony Stark Halloween edition. I hope you have a safe Halloween. All y'all that are celebrating today, uh, you absolutely crush it the rest of the day today and your weekend. And uh, until next week, we'll see you then in another episode of Ask the Experts. Thank you, guys. Thank no. you.